Well, we have Hollow Knight, of course, the classic. So Hollow Knight is like a cute but kind of dark action adventure game where you play as this little bug exploring a massive mysterious underground world. It's got this hand-drawn almost creepy cool art style that really sucks you in. So you slash your way through tons of enemies, find cool upgrades, and uncover secrets hidden in every nook and cranny. Plus, the bosses are tough but super satisfying and super rewarding to beat. It's like a mix of exploration, combat, and a sprinkle of eerie charm that keeps you hooked to the game. Do you know what a birthright is, Peter? So next we have Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. So this game is a fun action packed ride where you get to step into the shoes of Star-Lord. And no, this is not the same Chris Pratt's Star-Lord, but it is still the same like this quirky space-faring crew. You're not just shooting bad guys, you're also making decisions that affect how the story unfolds. The dialogue is hilarious and full of that classic Guardian's humor with lots of banter between the characters. And during combat, you can issue commands to the Art Guardians using their unique abilities to create awesome team combos. I think this one is quite similar to Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think they do learn something from FF7 Remake and put it a bit on this game. It's got a mix of blasting enemies, solving puzzles, and navigating through vibrant alien worlds. Plus, the soundtrack is filled with this epic 80s hits, making every battle feel like a rock concert. Overall, it's like being in your very own Guardians of the Galaxy movie. So, it is quite a fun time. Meet your maker. We're all professionals here, right? Maybe we can work something out. Get him. You had one job, Quill. I did exactly what. The more no killing teammates. That's who. We have Sifu. Sifu is an intense martial arts action game that feels like you are staring in your own kung fu movie. You play as a young martial artist on a quest for revenge. Yeah, classic classic. And the combat is all about fast, fluid, and super satisfying hand-to-hand -hand fighting. You punch, kick, block, and dodge your way through waves of enemies, and every move you make feels like part of a choreographed fight scene. And what's really cool is that every time you die, your character ages, so you come back stronger but with less health. Adding a unique twist where you have to balance skill and strategy. The levels are packed with tough opponents and challenging bosses, and you need to stay sharp to make it through. It's all about mastering the art of kung fu and taking down anyone who stands in your way with style. And people say that this is a roguelite kind of game too, so if you like roguelite then I think this is for you. Put that down. Look what we have. Only a foot. Final Fantasy Zodiac. Age. Now, I think this is the first JRPG on the list, and the game is like stepping into a grand sprawling fantasy adventure where you control a group of heroes in a beautifully detailed world. The gameplay combines traditional RPG elements with real-time combat, so instead of taking turns, you see your characters and enemies moving and fighting in real time. The fun part about this game is, of course, the gambit system, which are like the AI commands for your party members to follow in battle. It is super satisfying to see your strategies play out smoothly. The world is huge and filled with side quests, hidden treasures, and massive creatures to fight. Zodiac Age version spices things up with a revamp job system, letting you customize your character's abilities in even cooler ways. Exploration in this game is massive, and you will find yourself getting lost in a lush landscapes, ancient ruins, and bustling cities. It's a mix of strategic planning and real-time action, wraps up in an epic story with unforgettable characters and plenty of twists and turns. But I still don't like Vaughn.
Well, it's Mega Man. I think it is self-explanatory. If you love Mega Man, you will definitely love the collection. I have the second collection and I and I had a blast playing that game. So if you are really a fan of Mega Man, I think you should get this because you will have a ton of fun playing this game with lots and lots of history behind this, like the gallery, the soundtrack, the challenging boss fights in this game. Man, it, it will take you back to the PS2 era and the PS1 era. It is just that good. This game is just that good. I have to recommend you guys Cyberpunk 2077. So you play as V and you are trying to make a name in the underbelly of Night City. The gameplay is a mix of first person shooting, hacking, driving and role playing. You can approach missions in different ways whether you prefer sneaking around, hacking into systems or going in guns blasting your enemies. There's a ton of customization from your character's appearance to their skills and cybernetic enhancement. So you can really play the way you want in Cyberpunk 2077. The city itself is packed with side quests, random encounters, and a variety of colorful characters. The story is deep and full of choices that impact how things unfold. Yes, it has different ending, giving it a personal touch. Plus, the world is incredibly detailed with futuristic tech, intense action sequences, and a greedy atmosphere that makes exploring and causing chaos a blast. It's like living out your own sci-fi action movie. It's really fun. Took a few internal organs while they were at it. Also very resourceful. You don't understand. Resident Evil 2. This game is a faithful reimagining of the classic survival horror masterpiece while delivering modern graphics and gameplay. It excels in creating an immersive atmosphere with detailed environments, eerie sound design, and tense, claustrophobic settings that keep players on edge. The game strikes a perfect balance between exploration, puzzle solving, and intense combat, offering satisfying gameplay that challenges players to manage resources wisely against hordes of zombies and terrifying Mr. X. Enhanced character development and storyline deepen the experience, making the protagonist Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield more engaging than ever. With multiple scenarios and choices that affect gameplay and story outcomes, our E2 remake offers high replayability, ensuring its appeal lasts well beyond the initial playthrough. So. RE2 Remake is of course one of the best games, well actually one of the best horror games in the market right now, so get it on summer sale man, it is worth your time if you do like horror game. Get out now! Resident Evil 4 Remake It is considered one of the best remakes by many. It retains the thrilling and intense gameplay of the original while updating it with modern graphics and improved mechanics. The game's blend of shooting, strategy combat, and exploration keeps players engaged throughout. And the parry system in this game is fucking fun and super satisfying. It is praised for its atmospheric tension, challenging enemies, and satisfying gameplay mechanics, making it a standout in the action game genre. So I do recommend checking this game out because this game is fun, action-packed, and of course, thrilling. The hell's going on? What was that?
Devil May Cry 5. Well, if you're looking for the best action game, this, this is the game. The combat is super satisfying, it is fast paced and challenging as hell. I have nothing more to say than if you want to experience a super, super good action game, this is the one. Octopath Traveler 2 is a beautiful retro styled RPG where you can dive into the adventures of 8 unique characters each with their own unique story and special abilities. The game's stunning pixel art mixed with modern graphics gives it a charming nostalgic feel. Gameplay wise it's turn based combat with a twist. You'll gather a party of heroes, explore different regions and tackle various quests. During battles, you strategically use each character's skills and exploit enemies' weaknesses to break their defenses. Outside of combat, each character has unique actions they can perform like stealing items, recruiting help, or gathering information, which adds a fun layer to exploring towns and interacting with NPCs. It's a mix of classic JRPG mechanics with fresh, innovative elements that make it a joy to play. So give this game a try and for any turn-based JRPG lovers out there, this will satisfy your needs. It's my turn. <laughs> For Gundam fans, of course, there is gonna be SD Gundam G Generation Cross Race. This game is a classic in the Gundam, I mean in the SD Gundam world. You get to assemble your team of mobile suits and pilots from series like Gundam Wing, Gundam Seed, Gundam Double O, and Iron Blood Orphans, and of course many many more. The game features a cute uh, SD form as you all know SD Gundam from the name itself, and the gameplay involves a turn-based tactical battles. You deploy your units, move them strategically, and funny part is that this game has some kind of auto battle. Just a little bit though. Not everything can be autoed in this game. So I think it is quite a nice touch if you want to do some auto or to just mow down some enemies. Overall, it's a good blend of tactical strategy RPG and fan service, making it a must play for any Gundam enthusiast who enjoy planning their moves and seeing their favorite Gun Plus in action. Definitely check out SD Gundam G Generation Crosseries. Tactics Ogre Reborn. It is a revamped version of the classic tactical RPG, Tactic Ogre. It combines deep strategic gameplay with a compelling story set in a war-torn fantasy world. And to be honest, the story is quite dark so beware of that. Even though the art style is quite nice, cute, and chibi. You control a group of characters and engage in turn-based battles on grid-based maps. So basically tactical. RPG as the name says it all, right? Tactics Ogre. The game offers a rich narrative with branching story paths where your decisions impact the direction of the plot and the fate of your characters. Each character can be customized with various classes, skills, and equipment allowing you to create a team that fits your tactical preferences. With improved graphics, updated controls, and enhanced sound, Tactics Ogre Reborn provides a modern take on a beloved classic offering both newcomers and longtime fans a deep and rewarding strategy experience. So there's that. Too many died today. The future of our people depends on it. There is blood on my hands. 
Hang on. Winning in Balatro is simple. All we have to do is play a flawless four of a kind. Bellatro, man, this game is super unique. This game is super fun. So Bellatro is an engaging roguelike game that puts a twist on traditional poker mechanics. You manage a 52 card deck with 150 unique joker cards that affect gameplay. Planet cards boost poker hands, while arcane cards let you tweak your deck. Boss rounds feature challenging modifiers like debuff hard cards or limited hand types. Between rounds you shop for upgrades with earned cash throughout your playthrough. With strategic depth and variability, Bellatro offers a rewarding challenge suitable for players of all levels once you grasp its mechanics. So, Bellatro is a really really unique and fun roguelike game, a roguelike deck building game. Into aces and unlock a truly forbidden hand. Five of a kind. <sighs> like I said, winning in Bellatro is simple. Dead Cells. I mean, who doesn't know Dead Cells? This game has been around for years and years and years, received a lot of very, very positive reviews. It is one of the best roguelike games out there. I mean, you gotta try it yourself. What's not to love about Elden Ring? So if you want to dive into this Dark Souls or Souls-like game, this is the easiest way to go. The game gives you a lot of choices if you want to make the game easier. This game has all the resources for you to do just that. And if you want to make the game harder, then also go for it. This game also has the resources to do just that. Elden Ring will keep you company for over maybe 200 hours if you want to complete the game or explore more of the world but if you want to just engage to the story i think you can go for about around maybe 50 hours into the game so yeah you will get your money's worth buying this game there's no doubt about it Another one from FromSoft. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is an action-adventure game set in a beautiful feudal Japan-inspired world. You play as a shinobi named Wolf using precise swordplay style and a grappling hook to navigate and fight. Combat focuses on parrying and deflecting attacks, making timing and skill crucial. The game includes a resurrection mechanic allowing you to come back to life after dying adding a strategic element to it. Known for its challenging difficulty, Sekiro offers a rewarding experience for players who enjoy mastering complex combat and exploring rich environments. Timesia. Timesia is an action RPG that immerses you in a dark and gothic world where you play as Corvus. Well, it's kind of like Souls-like, okay? Yeah, I know, this game is another Souls-like, but come on man, it's, it's quite fun. The game's combat is more fast-paced than Dark Souls or Elden Ring, and of course it is challenging, emphasizing dodging, parrying, and precise timing. You wield a variety of weapons, including the ability to harness weapons from your enemies, adding a unique twist to combat. As you defeat foes, you can upgrade your abilities and weapons, tailoring your playstyle to suit your preferences. The game also features intricate environments filled with secrets and lore to uncover. Overall, Time Asia combines intense skill-based combat with deep customization and a hauntingly atmospheric world, making it a compelling choice for fans of challenging action RPGs, you know, or any Souls-like fans. So make sure to check out Timesia if you have the time, and I know if you like Souls-like games, you will have a good time playing this game.
The next we have Overcook All You Can Eat. So this game basically combines Overcook and Overcook 2 with all their DLC, featuring upgraded graphics and new content. You and your friends pretty much can play together but be ready to ruin your relationship with them because this game ain't no fun if you make a mistake. So the gameplay is fast paced and relies on teamwork and communication making it a perfect for parties and fun with friends. This game also includes new levels, chefs, recipes and accessibility options for all players like assist mode. So if you are having a hard time before playing Overcook, I think this will pretty much make it easier. So Overcook all you can eat, check it out. We have Blasphemous 2. Blasphemous 2 excels in its metroidvania formula with refined combat mechanics. The pairing system is super satisfying and impactful, complemented by brutal kill animations. Skills and power-ups enhance both combat and exploration, offering essential tools for progression. Players now wield three distinct weapons, Verdicto, a powerful fire maze, Ruego I, 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 Alba, I don't know how to pronounce it, I, I know. Sorry if I mispronounce it, and that is a versatile sword with mystic abilities and a parry. And the last but not least is Sarmiento and Centella, a swift rapier dagger combo with electric enhancements. Each weapon aids in platforming challenges and can be tailored to personal combat preferences through upgrades like rosary beads and altar pieces. Boss fights in these games are also pretty good, they are varied and challenging providing a rewarding experience with each victory. So give Blasphemous 2 a try and I know you will have a lot of fun playing this game. Next we have Final Fantasy VII Remake. While this one is a good remake but I know it is far from perfect, it features impressive graphics, great voice acting, like really really good, like this is how AAA voice acting should be, and an improved battle system combining hack and slash action with menu based skill selection, you know, via ATB system, like all the Final Fantasy games that we all love and like. However, the story diverged significantly from the original, especially in the controversial chapter 18. Because of this, it divides the fans, but I think it's okay because this is a remake. So the game expands the original Midgar section into a full game, serving as the first part of a planned trilogy. We know we already have Rebirth, but this is mainly focused on the Steam games for PC, and for now, the Rebirth is not yet out. But overall, it is a good game with very linear story. If you are not attached to the original plot, you will likely enjoy this one. But if the original story is very important to you, I have to say that proceed with caution because you will not have a fun time. But for me, first time playing this game, I do love it. I really really love it and I cannot wait for Rebirth to come to PC. I got this. Okay. A train laden with baggage and passengers. Red Dead Redemption 2. Of course, this one should be in the list. So, RDR2 lets you live out a Wild West adventure as Arthur Morgan, an outlaw in a gang. You explore a vast, detailed world, engage in shootouts, hunt, fish, and play poker. Yeah, you can do anything in this game. The game combines story missions with numerous side activities, quite a bit of realistic combat, and deep character interactions. And not to mention again, the voice acting in this game is next level. Almost the same as Final Fantasy VII Remake, but I think this is better. 
like a lot better. So you can customize your gear, take care of your horses, and make choices that affect the story, creating an immersive cowboy experience or you know wild west experience so red dead redemption 2 even though it is quite an old game yes it does not have the quality of life of a modern game but it is still a very very fun game and there is mods yeah there is mods to make your life easier in this game give this game a go please you will have a ton of fun playing this game i ain't doing this with you right now Go wait with Uncle and Mary Beth. They're across the street. Okay. Thanks, Arthur. Uncle! Look after her! I will go see about Karen in the hotel. So, yeah. Sell him. Well, being King of is now on Steam. I have to recommend you guys this game. So Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Final Mix or with the 1.5 plus, you play as Sora traveling through various Disney and Square Enix worlds, fighting heartless and other enemies with real-time combat with full, full of action-packed combat. Like the game, the gameplay itself, you, you have to play it. It's like Devil May Cry but better in my opinion. The game features improved graphics, yes. It does have an improved graphics from the Epic Games one. Additional content, new abilities, and tougher enemies compared to the original Kingdom Hearts 2. With its mix of fast-paced action, iconic characters, and an engaging story, it is pretty much a must-play for fans of the series and of course, newcomers alike. So if you like a good action RPG, then this is for you. Risk of Rain 2. Well, this is a roguelike game, but with multiplayer elements to it. So you will play as different characters and you can unlock and find upgrades along the way and pretty much filled with boss fights in this game. Like if you get into the boss fight, man, it is so exciting. Yes, you can do co-op in this game. So it is super fun with friends, like super, super fun. And it has this roguelike nature where you want to go for one more run and one more run and without realizing you are five hours deep into the game so risk of rain 2 a super fun game for single player and also with friends so give this game a try some might not like it uh, from the art style alone but i kid you not that this is a fun game and i enjoyed myself i have around 100 hours maybe on this game Well, Monster Hunter World, what do you expect? Of course, this is going to be on the list. Go get it. You will have a ton of fun. This game has insane replayability. I know most of you guys will probably say, but but you will be fighting the same monster over and over again. But yeah, that's the good part. The fighting, the combat in this game is exquisite. It is so strategic, but also action packed. I'm like, I don't know how they do it, but this game is just amazing. And you cannot just mindlessly attack the enemies you have to learn their attack patterns you have to learn their hitboxes because every monsters in this game has different hitboxes so you really have to learn and get good Hades 2. Well, if you love Hades 1, go get this one because this one is more Hades. And when I play this game, the combat is more fluid than Hades 1. So I think that's the good thing. 
and there are a lot more varieties of enemies on Hades 2. And of course, just take a look at the incredible environment in this game. Man, please go get Hades, man. Anyone, any, any Hades, Hades 1 or Hades 2. But I do recommend you go for Hades 2 because Hades 2 is a lot, a lot better in a lot of ways. I mean, I'm not saying that Hades 1 is bad. Hades 1 is good, really good. But this one is better and take a look at the performance of this game it is top tier it doesn't have any frame drops it doesn't have any starters or anything like that so give this game a go and i know you will sink a hundred hours plus in this game Spider-Man Remastered. Well, if you haven't played Spider-Man, go get this one because you will love it. Especially if you are a fan of Spider-Man. You will be engaged into the story. You will be super into the combat. Because, man, this game knows how to make you feel like Spider-Man. Especially the web swinging. It is really, really fun. You can do tricks. You can do this and gain more XP. And gain more abilities to, you know, make the combat more fun. Make the swinging more fun to you. So, there's that. Hey, Yuri, looks like some of your guys were on Fisk's payroll. Here goes nothing. Nino Kuni 2 is a charming and magical RPG. You play as Evan, a young king, on a quest to build a new kingdom. The gameplay blends exploration, combat, and kingdom management. You will explore a vibrant world, fight in real time battles with a mix of melee and magic, and of course, a little bit of gun, you know? I know it's really really funny, but I like it. And you can recruit citizens to help you grow your kingdom. The game is filled with adorable characters, fun side quests, and heartwarming story, making it a delightful adventure for players of all ages. Watch your backs! <laughs> Ori and the Whale of Wisp. Now, this is the second installment from the franchise or the IP. So, Ori and the Whale of Wisp is a beautifully crafted platformer that combines exploration, puzzle solving, and fast paced action. You play as Ori, of course, a small guardian spirit, navigating through a stunning hand painted world filled with diverse environments. The gameplay focuses on precise platforming where you jump climb and glide through intricate levels while avoiding obstacles and enemies. Combat wise, combat is really fluid and dynamic, allowing you to use various abilities and skills to defeat foes. You also unlock new powers and upgrades that help you access previously unreachable areas, encouraging exploration. So there are gonna be some backtracking, but backtracking is really fun though. The game features challenging puzzles and emotional storytelling, creating an immersive experience that's both visually and emotion that's both visually and emotionally captivating Yeah! <laughs> 
Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This game nails it with a great story set in the Star Wars universe, following Cal Kestis as he evades the Empire. The lightsaber combat feels awesome, it's a bit like Souls-like, maybe you can say it like souls light, And with plenty of force powers to mix things up in battles against enemies and tough bosses. Exploring the game's interconnected worlds is a blast, especially when you uncover hidden secrets and gain new abilities. Plus, the game looks and sounds amazing, really pulling you into the Star Wars experience. So for me, it is a must play for any Star Wars fan. The last but not the least will be any Persona series because this game is good. Any Persona game that you pick up will satisfy you in most cases. Now, if you like a good turn-based RPG or turn-based JRPG, man, just get this game. I know you will probably be thinking like, oh man, this game is quite expensive for an old game in 2024. But no, this game is worth every penny. Like any any game, Persona 3 Reload or Persona 5 Royale or even Persona 4 Golden. But I have to say that my favorite is Persona 4 Golden. So so go check the Persona series, the turn-based combat, the interaction, uh, the social links in this game. Like there's like a bit of um, life sim in this game. So I think that's the good thing about this game too. You have so many content. You have infinite replayability. You can do this, do that, combine, fuse, and just do many things in this game. You can take a bat, it will increase your, I don't know, your knowledge probably. You can study, you can do this, do that, you can play games with your friends. It is such a fun time playing Persona, any Persona games. That's pretty much it. 30 games, man. I need a summer break, by the way. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And hopefully this video can help you what you want to buy or what you want to play. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next one and don't forget have fun with your games. Got it. Good. Let's continue exploring.